All right, pumped. So welcome guys. Um, I see some more people jumping on. Excited to see you guys. Uh, excited to be live. You know, this is something for those of you who don't know, something I'm doing every Wednesday now at 2 p.m. Uh, 21st Century Sponsoring, which is a brand I've been building for a little while. Some of my uh, good trainings, products, ebook, etc. Uh, so this is 21st Century Sponsoring Live. I have created a page where I am getting questions from those who attend and uh, certainly bring those questions out and answer them every week. That is justiceegan.com forward slash live. You can get all the information over there, sign up for updates, answer questions. Something I highly recommend you do is uh, subscribe on here, right? If you're on Periscope, subscribe. If you're on Facebook Live, subscribe. Uh, you can hit that little subscribe button and, and give me some love, guys. If you've ever gotten value out of my training, uh, you know, like, comment, share, uh, all that good stuff. Want to start? Uh, Want to start getting some people uh, onto this live stream because I really like doing them. I, I think this is a really great feature. So looking good. Ah, uh, thank you, Robert. Appreciate it, um, guys. And certainly today, I've got some. I've got some questions lined up for today that I'm going to discuss. But if you have got questions, feel free to drop them uh, in the comments there, especially on Facebook because those comments stay. I can see them uh, for a longer period of time. So yeah, definitely would, would, would open to answering any questions that come my way today. But a couple topics we're going to talk about today. So, gr social media growth, okay, growing your audience on social media, big question that came up. Um, time management, how to grow your business if you're limited on time. Uh, if, can you guys give a like or a comment if you can relate to being limited on time. I know a lot of people... Uh, you know, start this business part time, right? A lot of people are doing either their network marketing business or growing their internet marketing business in between, right? In between, you know, what's going on in, in their life and life can get pretty busy. And we're going to talk about multiple streams of income, how I feel about multiple streams, streams of income, when you should start growing multiple streams of income, um, how, you know, uh, like, like whether, whether you should or shouldn't, right? Um, wh whether you're ready or not to. Uh, multiple MLMs, whether that's in the cards or not. So that that's going to be something I talk about as well. And then again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them on here. All right. So um, question number one, the big one uh, that got that that someone sent me today. Actually, I forgot to talk about it. Is how to grow a bigger audience on social media. Yeah, I mean, really, that it's hugely, hugely important, right? I mean, most of uh, most of us at this point growing a home business are functioning on social media in some capacity, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on Twitter, whether you're on Instagram, Snapchat's getting really big. And, you know, obviously each one's a little different in the way uh, you grow your audience. And, and I mean, the end game here, right, is to have not just the, not just the size of your audience, okay? It's, that's not the most important thing, really how engaged that audience is, how much they care about what you're saying, how much they are interested in what it is that you're sharing, okay? How targeted they are, all that good stuff. I see plenty of people out there with tens of thousands of Facebook fans that, that you know, don't respond to anything they do, whether it's advertising, whether it's organic, doesn't matter. So, you know, obviously you want to grow your audience, but you want to grow an engaged audience. And I think when people are getting started, this is, this is kind of tough, all right? Because, you know, our gut, our instinct tells us to just run out there and start friending or following as many people as we can. And that's how you end up with an unengaged audience. That's how you end up with the wrong audience. I think the real answer here, and, and you've heard this word a lot, you know, if you want to grow your social media audience, the real answer is value. Okay, now there's a few how-to ways to do it, right? Um, I mean, obviously, being active, prospecting, going out there, you know, finding people that, that uh, you know, have similar interests or points of commonality or are likely in your target audience, and reaching out to them, following them, right, friending them, you know, sending them a message, making that connection, you know, that's a really active way to start, and you should, you should start there. Um, but there's not a lot of leverage in that, right? Uh, then, uh, from a non-paid standpoint, obviously posting things that are shareable, posting things of value, driving engagement. You know, when people engage, other people are going to see your stuff. When people share, other people are going to see your stuff. But what type of stuff are people going to share? They're not going to share stuff with loads of links in it. They're not going to share stuff that's pitchy. They're not going to share stuff where you're soliciting business. All right, they're going to share things that they feel safe sharing, things that they feel are of value to their audience. So if you take an approach to social media when you're really just trying to build up this audience of understanding a few things. One, you know, people are not going to share your stuff if it, if it feels pitchy or, or business, you know, if you're soliciting business. 
Um, two, you got to get active. You got to roll your sleeves up and get busy and get out there. And then three, the fastest way, okay, and, and I really like this, I like all three as an option, is through paid advertising. Most of the platforms, okay, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Snapchat one day, I'm sure will. I mean, everybody needs to monetize at some point. Most of these platforms uh, have the opportunity to grow your fan base, your following via paid advertising. And what's really cool is you can dive in and target based on behavior, based on kind of those uh, psychographics, you know, things you know about what a person likes, what they dislike, what they engage with, what they're thinking, that kind of stuff. Um, so you can get a really, really, you can get the perfect fan. You can get the perfect follower through paid advertising. So if you want to grow your, your, your audience, I suggest doing all three at once. Be active, get out there and reach out to people, all right, make connections. Based on commonality, not just based on how many can I get, not just based on who can I sign up, right? That's, that, is, guys, that is like where so many people's headspace is at when they're getting started. And it's not about getting people, right? It's about, it's about networking. It's about building an audience of, of people who are interested, in, you're interested in, in them and their growth and their well-being and their results. They're interested in what you have to say. So networking, right? Being active, uh, posting stuff that, that is of value to people, that they would engage with, that feel safe to share, okay, and running paid ads. Now, something to understand, and this is where social media gets really cool, this is where the internet gets so cool in general, is that people as a whole, they congregate, right? They congregate based on common interests, they congregate based on, I mean, based on, on, on traits, on things that they have in common. And when you can figure out where they're at, what groups they're in, what they like, what they respond to, what interest they might fall into in a Facebook paid ad. Once you understand where they hang out, what, where, what, kind of, you know, what kind of group they might be in in LinkedIn, or what kind of people they might follow on Twitter, once you understand where that ideal person hangs out, well, then you can do all three of these in a really effective manner. You can advertise to those people, you can get on there, do, you know, post, you know, you can, you can put stuff that, that would entice them towards you uh, to share your stuff, to comment, you know, depending on how people find, right? Maybe it's based on hashtags, things like that. And you can network with those people and you can reach out to those people. And the cool part is, is you can kind of add a little fuel to the fire because once you're getting the right people, and not just trying to go out and get anyone on social media, once you're getting the right people, they're likely surrounded by more of the right people, okay? And that's why it's kind of quality over quantity. And you want to, at the beginning, at the beginning, it's kind of a grind, okay? You got to roll your sleeves up and, and, and get the work done. I mean, when you're like, like something I really didn't focus on for a long time was Instagram. I'm just really starting to focus on growing that audience now. And at the beginning, you know, I'm, I'm up of maybe 2,000 plus followers. Now, it's growing a little more quickly now. But at the beginning, it's a grind because... You know, you're not, the engagement doesn't take you as far, right? Your efforts don't take you as far because you're, you're getting in front of a very small audience, but that's something that's going to compound on itself. So what I tell you is, and I, I believe this um, wholeheartedly is if you want to grow your social media audience, wrap your arms around a platform, get after that platform, really learn the inner workings of that platform. Don't try and just grow them all at once and then leverage that audience that you build to kickstart you know, wherever you want to build, wherever you want to grow the next audience. And that's kind of the way I approached, you know, um, Instagram. I was late to the game there, but I just didn't, you know, I felt that, that, that you know, being active there, uh, I was either going to be active or not be active, you know, and now I'm active over there. So, which by the way, go follow me on Instagram at Justice Egan. Um, guys, any, uh, any questions, give me some likes, some hearts over on Periscope if you're getting, if that makes sense to you, if uh, you got any valuable information out of that. Um, something, question number two that came up. And again, guys, if you want to submit questions, go over to justiceegan.com forward slash live. Uh, you can get notifications over there. I don't think I have my upcoming webinar up there yet, but that is a place where you're also going to be able to get, um, the information on the, 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 mo the, mo the, the most recent or most, the soonest upcoming events or trainings that I have going on. So, um, which the next one I believe is this Saturday. Uh, at 3 p.m. I'm doing a really cool training on audience building. I will get the link up on this page soon. It is not up there yet. But um, next question that came up was, um, you know, how do you grow your business if you're super limited on time? You know, if life's super, super busy, what, how much time does it take, right, to get out there and get results? And this is a really, really interesting question because I got to tell you that the, the people that I have seen 
get the best results are often the people with the least amount of time. All right. And I think it has to do with the amount of structure that their busyness adds to their life. And I see lots of hearts coming up over on, uh, on Periscope. Appreciate you guys. You know, I, I've worked with, you know, moms and, and, and people that work two jobs and all this stuff. And, and those who have more limited time have a tendency to manage that time and to make the most out of the pockets of time that they have. Right? So what does it really come down to if you're limited on time? It comes down to prioritization. You know, not doing uh, the stuff that doesn't matter. And that's really the hardest part for people. I've never met somebody who said, Justice, I don't have the time. And that same person manages their time perfectly or, or, or doesn't have fat to trim somewhere. In other words, they're running at peak efficiency and telling me they don't have time. No, they're, they're, they're telling me they don't have time and they're, they're likely running uh, very inefficiently. You know, the, the, the big activities, getting your presentation in front of people, creating content, right? Prospecting, you know, the big activities that are gonna, that are gonna you know, setting up ads if you advertise, that are going to create results for you. They don't, they don't take up like this extraordinary amount of time. It's the activities that don't matter that we have a tendency to put in there as filler. The busy work, the busy being busy stuff, the stuff that we're comfortable doing to avoid the other stuff that makes it so that, you know, we seem to run out of time uh, on our business. So if you're limited on time, a couple of things I tell you is one, be completely honest with yourself, all right? Are you being as efficient as you can be? What are the things that you should most be doing? What are the number one priorities? And, and a lot of times, if there's something you keep saying you should be doing and it keeps moving from to-do list to to-do list, it's very likely that that is um, an item that's like number one on the list, right? Something you're afraid of doing that you need to do, that you should be doing. Uh, there's a great book out there called Rework, and they talk about the three types of things that you could be doing, right? The stuff that, the stuff that you, um, the stuff that you want to do, the stuff that you could do, and the stuff that you should do, right? And I'm paraphrasing a little bit. They might, they might be a little bit different than that, but basically want to do, could do, should do. And people have a tendency to start at the want to do, move to the could do, and then finish if they ever find the time, which they rarely do, with the should do, with the important stuff. Um, understand that if you can be honest with yourself, about those things you're avoiding, if you can be honest with yourself and follow the, the leadership and the advice of the people who have what you want when they tell you what those important activities are. I mean, me and Adam have built an entire brand around simplifying um, you know, the daily activities involved with growing your business. And, and when you get honest with yourself about what those activities are and you actually prioritize, you can make a lot of progress with very little you know, daily time allotted. You know, I've, I've found that if I, if I knock out the top three things, the three most important things each and every day in my business, it, 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 things move forward and they move forward, uh, you know, really, really well. So I see uh, what's going on. Shout out to Robert, Mr. Gilock's on here, Roman, good to see you guys. Uh, appreciate the hearts over there on Periscope. Guys, if this is making sense to you, uh, please, some likes, some hearts some share, some engagement, all that good stuff. Let's get 21st Century sponsoring uh, live out in front of some people. This is the sixth uh, week or episode I've done it. And the cool part is up here on justiceagan.com forward slash live, uh, I post all the archives, all the episodes. So they're just gonna build up over there a really cool uh, bank of content. So make sure to get your questions in over there so I can get them answered. Um, last question I was going to answer today, unless you guys uh, drop any on the comment thread, which you're more than welcome to, uh, is about multiple streams of income, right? A lot of people, I mean, the message out there, multiple streams of income, that's what everybody should be building. Don't put all your eggs in one basket and multiple streams of income are awesome. But here's what you have to know. It is really almost impossible. I'll just say hard because impossible is such an absolute word. Um, it is really hard to grow multiple streams of income in your home business if you've never grown one. And guys, guys, give me a drop a comment or give me some hearts if you know people in our industry who have multiple things that they sell but aren't making sales in any of them or are making minimal sales in all of those things. Give me, uh, let me, let me see some engagement. If that's, if, if you, I, I wish we were like on a webinar, like the hand raise, right? Um, you know, I, I see it across the board and 
you know, the benchmark for me, there's no, this is an arbitrary number. There's no right answer here. But in my opinion, you should focus on building something until you get that income stream to at least $1,000 a month. That's pretty reasonable, right? I mean, 1000 bucks a month with an income stream before you said, you know what, I'm going to add this other thing that I sell. I'm going to offer something else. And the benefit in doing this, there's so many benefits, so many benefits in focusing on one thing. The benefits are that A, you develop the skills on how to find the right target audience for that product, how to communicate the benefits of that product, how to meet the needs and solve the problems of, of the person who may want that product service opportunity, whatever it is, and then actually move them into you know, the purchase, into the sale. And when you figure out how to do all those things, then it's 10 times easier to do it again with something else, right? So when you are trying to do that with multiple things where maybe the communication, the benefit message, the, 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 the materials, everything about it, the audience might vary just a tiny bit, well then it, it, you know, it, not only is it harder to do, it's harder for you to take it from point A to point B you know, to fruition and start making sales, but I think it's harder to position yourself and have people in a marketplace understand what it is you sell, what it is you stand for, what that message is, what it is you provide. Until, okay, until that stuff gets really clear for you, until you build that presence, then it becomes easier. What you want to do is you want to make sure that the things you sell, and this is another thing I see all the time, complement each other, right? If you're going to build multiple streams of income once you've, once you've successfully built one, no different than marketing strategies, right? If you go out there and you're trying to learn every marketing strategy under the sun at one time, are you going to get anywhere? You're not. But if you, if you see one to fruition and you can start generating leads with a marketing strategy, it becomes 10 times easier to move over to another one and start generating leads, right? So, you know, when you're, when you're building that income stream and you're ready to add another income stream, make it a, make it a complementing income stream. Make it something that, could, that the person who already bought from you could also buy and benefit from rather than something that's competing. You know, and that kind of brings us into kind of the idea of multiple MLMs. Guys, I, I don't, I've never seen anybody in our space build too strong MLM teams, right? There's too much culture to build. There's too much, um, you know, there's, there's too much team to build, right? And, and, and you've got to be 100% behind. I mean, you've got to be singing the music of that product service opportunity. And when you're, you know, the idea of building multiple that are literally competing with each other, Right? If somebody finds out you're in this deal and they want that deal, they would leave this deal to go to that deal or vice versa. And I know ideally, you know, people who try and do it, they're not, you know, they're trying to like keep them separate, but it just, I've never seen anybody successfully do it at a big, big level. I've seen people recruit into multiple, but that's not, you know, building, that's not building a team. So, you know, when it comes to MLM, I, I, I really believe you, you should, you should hunker down, you know, get, get psyched right? Plant your flag at one and, and grow that. Focus on growing that. And when it comes to multiple streams of income, you know, just make sure that your income streams are complementing each other, right? That, that they work together and make sure that whatever income streams you're going to build, that you grab one and that you build it first. Build one. Develop the skills. Get to the finish line on one. Like I said, I think the mark, I think a great mark to go for would be a thousand dollars a month before you ever consider um, even selling something else. But again, that's a totally arbitrary number, whatever the number is for you. Uh, but I highly recommend that you, that you don't go in, if you've never made sales in one thing, that you're not adding other things that you could pen, potentially sell in the name of multiple streams of income so you won't put all your eggs in one basket. Guess what? You don't have any eggs at that point, right? You gotta, you gotta build an egg before you can worry about putting too many in one basket. So hope that all makes sense, guys. Uh, where are we at? We're about the 20 minute mark. Um, would love some hearts over here on Periscope to see who's on with us and, and uh, if you're getting value and, and definitely guys drop a comment below over here on Facebook. Uh, if you have any questions, I will gladly answer them. But if not, uh, we are going to close out 21st Century Sponsoring Live for the day. Make sure to go over here to justiceegan.com forward slash live. Guys, that is the place. There's a spot right there that you can submit your questions. I put them all aside. We'll answer them on upcoming episodes. We've got the archives on that page, upcoming webinars on that page. You can subscribe for updates on that page. Um, so really, a uh, really great resource page if you want to join me or get the information from this uh, little live stream that we do every Wednesday too. So appreciate you guys. 
Uh, we'll be talking to you all very soon, and uh, make sure to subscribe. We'll see you next Wednesday.